Hi, I just wanted to share a few interesting articles um, about what's going on with some animal spread diseases that are recently in the news. I want to take a look at Revelation 6. Um, I believe the seals were right here at the very precipice of the seals happening. Um, and I also had an interesting thought. Um, somebody was sharing about 40 days and then um, I didn't realize it, but if you count, um, well, we have the eclipse, solar eclipse happening on August 21st. And if you count 40 days until after that, it's going to be September 30th. And the evening of September 29th to the 30th is um, the Day of Atonement, the High Holy Day um, on the Jewish calendar. Uh, and so um, I think we need to be focused in seeking the Lord um, and perhaps fasting um, on that holy day. That's the main thing they focus on on the Day of Atonement is it's a it's a traditionally a fast a fasting day and evening and day. So um, just wanted to throw that out there um, for the things that are coming upon the world and that we will see um, some of these occur before we're taken to be with the Lord. So here in Revelation 6, we see, okay, so, now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a, lot, a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold a white horse, he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the living, second living creature saying, come and see and another horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword, the war. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the living, uh, third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a Daenerys and three quarts of barley for a Daenerys. Do not harm the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures, the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with war, with hunger, famine, with death, and by the beast of the earth. Okay, so a fourth of the earth, that's a lot of people. Um, a fourth of the earth from conflict, from the sword, and ultimately probably from the war. And if we're looking at World War III, that would be nuclear war. It would affect growth of food, distribution of food, possibly power, leaving a many, if not all, with hunger or famine. There, therefore, and lack of facilities for health care and such, so death, and by the beasts of the earth. And so that's what I want to focus on this this verse right here, Revelation 6, 8. Um, so the beasts of the earth. This verse came to my mind when I saw this news article pop up on my side screen today. Um, because we normally think beasts of the earth, okay, if people are hiding out in the wilderness, it could be bears, mountain lions, and so forth, correct? Um, but think smaller. <laughs> This article was, they found the plague bacteria in some fleas in Arizona today. It was um, the article that came out. This is LiveScience.com. So plague bacteria found in Arizona fleas. I'm going to leave a link so you can read the articles if you wish. Um, but it, the, 
Black Death, bubonic plague. It's the bacteria that causes that that was found in these fleas. And so um, it's the symptoms of, sorry, plague typically appear within two weeks of exposure, include fever, chills, headache, weakness, sort of like the flu, muscle pain, and swollen lymph glands. But the lymph glands are what are notorious uh, as a sign for this infection. They're called buboes, and they get purplish and large. Um, the disease is curable with antibiotics if treated early. So if at all possible, try to keep some um, antibiotics. Uh, you can order fish antibiotics um, or the ones that you've saved that you didn't use from the doctors, but try to have some of these on hand in your emergency stash. Um, also, Newsweek had an article talking about the same thing. This also came out today. Uh, plague fleas in Arizona test positive for easily spread and fatal disease. So if you're not, if it's not treated early, then it just runs its course throughout your body. And it's a bacteria, so uh, they didn't have antibiotics. And if antibiotics help um, their anti-life so they will kill living organisms such as um, bacteria. So they will help deplete the bacteria in your body so that your immune system, your white cells can take control and, and you can overcome the illness. Viruses, on the other hand, antibiotics don't do any good with towards because a virus is not a living, um, my, uh, a living organism. It, it's just a protein coat with uh, RNA in it that uh, re it replicates itself, and it's sort of like a parasite. It'll infiltrate a cell or a tissue, and then it'll just keep reproducing itself so that it takes over that area, like your stomach for stomach flu or your sinuses for for a cold. But um, antibiotics won't kill it, your body has to, um, the immune system has to fight it off. So vitamin C, um, whatever immune boosters you use, um, some good teas, uh, antioxidants, and, and plenty of rest when you have a virus. But for the plague here, you would need antibiotics to fight it off since it's a bacteria. Also, um, this is from today on mountainx.com, Mountain Express. This is a confirmed rabies case in Chandler, Arizona. And so uh, if you do a search for this on Google, you'll find that there's rabies cases that pop up here and there. So keep your pets vaccinated for the rabies. Um, but also, if you're out, if you do need to bug out in the wilderness, um, any animal that shows aggression that normally typically wouldn't be aggressive, you just need to shoot it. <laughs> Don't let it um, attack you or your family. Okay, uh, Sacramento Bee. This is from, I don't know when this article was, but I did a search for different diseases. This is from July 21st. Little mice carry um, and rodents carry fleas that carry not only bubonic plague in color, the southwestern states typically now that we see, but in the west and northwest, even in Yosemite National Park, if you do a search, you'll see that the hantavirus is popping up. Um, even in some of the cabins or uh, the big, I forget what they're called, but the, the big tents that are like cabins um, in, yeah, in Yosemite, they found antivirus in some of the uh, rodent poop. So antivirus infection strikes Citrus Heights man, this is by LA, who was working at California State Park. So, um, if you 
have problems with rodents set traps, um, if you have other pets around set mouse traps instead of bait. Um, and then if you do have uh, any rodent, especially mice or rat poop around, you want to um, clean those up and then spray bleach, uh, bleach solution in the area to kill the, the hantavirus. Okay. And then we all know Zika has been in the news. It sort of died down, um, but they did have this case reported in Texas in, on July 26. Um, so it had been, you know, out of the news for a while, but this is spread by mosquitoes. And we know that mosquitoes are notorious for spreading malaria and a host of viruses. Viruses are so small, they're smaller than bacteria that uh, they can be trans, they can be um, consumed by the mosquito through their mouth and ingested into the mosquito and then it's like a dirty needle. So then when they bite someone else, they just spread that, spread those germs, West Nile virus, um, malaria, Zika, a host of other infections. Same with ticks. So if you have to bug out in the boonies, make sure that you have a at least a secure tent that you can go into, keep it closed at all times to keep the critters out. And um, you can also help deter them with different healthy sprays that don't have the, um, what is it, DEP or in it. But they even have essential oil um, you know, non-DT sprays for um, campers and kids. And you can make one with um, essential oils and a little bit of olive oil and a lot of distilled water. Um, there's different, usually peppermint, orange, lemongrass. Um, those type of essential oils are repelling to insects. So, and keep a good, in your uh, first aid box, keep a really good pair of um, tweezers with flat heads on the end, not pointed tips. Um, flat tips uh, that are fairly, you know, a few millimeters wide so that you can grab onto a tick um, gently, um, slowly wedging it out until it starts backing out and you can grab it and remove it and um, burn it after you remove it or flush it down the toilet if you're still at home. But if you're in the boonies, throw it in the fire. <laughs> so that's, I just wanted to bring that up so it would give you a few little extra things on, a little, some information on what to look out for and some practical ways that you can help um, deter any of these from causing you and your family harm. God bless.